Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five collaboration boosting tips using SharePoint team sites. Now, I've been working with SharePoint for the past 15 years, and in fact, it's got me awarded the Microsoft MVP certificate directly from Microsoft for all the efforts I've put into SharePoint. So join me as we learn more about these collaborational top tips. Okay, so first off, we've got folder structures. Now, this seems like something that'd be quite obvious, but actually, it's a fantastic way to make sure that everyone is working together and collaborating properly on your documents. So let's dive in and take a look at a couple of tips. So for this example, I'm going to be using a demonstration site, which is just a project management team. So we're simulating that we're working with a project management team. And this is a team site, and we can tell that it's a SharePoint team site because we've got the navigation bar on the left-hand side rather than at the top. And that gives us a way that this is, is actually a team site. Now, you can see we have our documents already embedded inside of our SharePoint site on our homepage, which again, which is going to help boost that kind of collaboration because it's easy to find those documents. But I want to look at folders because one thing you tend to find is you get a lot of kind of folders which um, end up being too deep or too structured in a way that um, is overwhelming to people when they're using it. So what you really want to do is talk with your team and find out what is the best structure which is going to work for you. Now, with this being a project management team, typically what you'd expect is that you would have um, folders which are based around specific projects. So maybe every time there's a new project, quite often, say, for example, when I've worked with construction companies or manufacturing companies, every time they kick off a new project, quite often the documents that they need are of the same. So they want to template that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by just removing all this. So I've got a clean blank slate. And I'm going to start off by creating a my almost like my top level folder, which will be for projects. So if I click on new and then click on folder, um, you can see we have color coordination here as well. So say, for example, if a project folder might be green. So I'm just going to call this my project template. And you'll see why later on, because I'm going to use this to be replicated. Every time I have a new project, I want a new folder for that project. So I'm going to call this my project template, because this is what I'm going to be basing um, those folders off. So maybe let's pretend I've had a chat with my team and we discuss what folders that we might need um, for our uh, for our new new project. So let's say, for example, uh, if it was a construction company, we might need to have a folder for the drawings, for example. And maybe let's just make that a red folder. Maybe there is a health and safety folder. Maybe let's make that blue. Uh, maybe there's going to be some images, like pictures and things like that, which are taken um, like so. Maybe we're going to have uh, some specifications, some specs, um, so forth like that. So you, you agree whatever your folder structure is. Now, we can also upload documents to be duplicated as well. Um, now, I don't think I've actually got any test documents in this site, so I'm just going to create uh, an example. So, for example, under health and safety, let's say, for example, um, we'll create a Word document. Now, this is probably most likely you've already got these documents so because of uploading rather than creating it. But let's just say, for example, um, this is going to be our toolbox talks. Uh, document. So this is something very common in the kind of construction industry. But I just wanted to create that one document so that if I just refresh this, you'll see that we now have that document inside of there. Now, if I go back to the top level of my document library, I've now got my folder structure, my folders, and even some documents inside of there. Now, every time I have a new project that kicks off, all I need to do is select that folder and then click on to the three dots uh, and then click on copy to. Um, and basically, I'm just going to copy it within inside its own library. So I'm just going to click on copy here, and it will then copy that template. All I then need to do is rename um, it because it will give it, it would basically just call it project template one. So maybe click on the three dots, click on rename, call it whatever the project is called. Quite often, if it's construction, it'll be address. So it'll be like 33 Fake Street, something like that. Um, 
and then click on update and there we go now actually if i click into my folder you then see i've got all my folder structures and you'll even see the documents as well that you put in here so this is a fantastic top tip when it comes to collaborating with your team making sure you've got an agreed folder structure that can be replicated the next top tip is content owners people actually taking responsibility for the documents that they specifically are editing and managing and owning so it's much easier for people to find the documents which are relevant to them now what we're going to do is we're going to create a tag so we're going to tag those documents with specific people's names but which allows people to either search filter or even group by people's names so they can find the documents that they need much easier so let's dive in and take a look so now back at the sort of top level of our document library, we can see we've got our folders here, uh, which contain our documents. I'm gonna add a new column. Now there's loads of different columns you could add in here. I've just picked on a person field, but you could add in a choice field if you wanted to maybe tag what type of project it is, multi lines of text if you wanted to say, for example, have a description of what the project is, maybe numbers to kind of order the projects, what, what order the projects are gonna happen in yes no is this a certain type of project yes or no um hyperlink if you're linking to maybe a client's website or other kind of external sources currency how much is the project worth the location so actually having a pin on a map of where that that project is going to take place um <clears throat> image if there's any specific images we want to tag against the folder um, and basically those are the most common ones that you're typically going to use so i'm going to select on the person click on next and this is going to be my content owner i'm just typing with one hand so it's a little bit slow um now i would typically also choose to show the profile photo because i think that helps with the kind of collaborational engagement on the team site so we can see our colleagues faces and then we can also choose do we want to allow multiple selections so multiple people could be responsible for one folder one document require this column contains information which i would suggest it probably should be if you're going to do this because then it's going to show in red if you haven't tagged a particular document for example and we can enforce unique values um, as well. Now we can say save in this case, and now we've got our column created. Now all I need to do, um, let's say for example, um, if I click on edit and grid view, I can then start populating this like it's a spreadsheet. So I'll start typing in people's names. So I've got myself in here, and then I'm just gonna type in George as well. You see he's got a profile picture in the demo environment. I don't actually have a, I don't have a profile picture yet. Um, so there we go. So now we've got our content owners. Now, I know this is a terrible example because I don't have much data in here, but you can see I could, if I wanted to, sort A to Z, which is not all that helpful, but filtering is really helpful because now I can filter by either me, so I can say, show things which, which are actually mine. So now we go, so we've got this, which is me. Now, if, if anyone was to do this, obviously it would, it would show whatever documents they were tagged with. Um, or let's say, for example, I can select individual people. So I can say, show me everything, which is George. Um, now, if I just go back to this idea of it being just for me, so this means now um, this URL at the top actually is specific now to this particular search. So it means then if I was to save this view, so I call this my documents, make it a public view. Now, it means I can jump between all documents to see all of them to then only show the ones uh, which are, are actually for me. Um, so if I just refresh. So there we go, we go to my documents. Now I can jump into the ones which are, are, are for me. And as I say, I could copy this link. I could copy it back to say, for example, the home page of my intranet, maybe even add a uh, link here. So I'll paste in that view link, call it my documents like so, and then click on save. And now I've got a link that goes directly to my documents. Um, so that's automatically filtering where it's found found me. So that's gonna help boost um, your collaboration because then you're easily getting to the documents that you need to access. As I say, we can multi-tag. So it means that you can tag multiple people on the same document, which makes it even easier um, to then work on documents together.
my third tip when it comes to boosting activity, uh, boosting collaboration is actually viewing the recent activity of your colleagues. Now we can do this really simply with a web part, which is plugged directly into the homepage of your SharePoint team site. And you can see everything that's been going on. Every time someone's edited a document, deleted a document or whatever, we can see all that activity in one place. So this is really useful, especially if maybe you're leading the team and you want to see what activity is going on or what activity for that particular project or team has been going on, you can dive directly into that. So let's take a look. So as I say, this is a web part that's um, actually on my team site, but we can add it dead easy. So if we go to edit mode on our SharePoint site, uh, we can add a web part. So if we click on this here, um, we can type in um, activity and you can either have, um, I don't know, hang on, it's not site activity. Ah, I was getting confused. It is site activity is the name of that web part, but there's actually another web part as well that we can also add if we wanted to. That's called recent documents. So recent documents is slightly different in the fact that it will show the recent documents for the current user. So it's just going to show what is recent to you and what you've been editing. So it might be worthwhile maybe putting this over here. So we've got sort of um, an area and it might be worth just calling that my recent documents just so it's clear what that is. Then we've got activity, which is showing uh, basically how you want to display the site activities, so how many we want. So maybe let's say five. And then we can see here every time um, something has been changed, so uh, a page has been added, a document's been added, added um, all these different things, all the activity is tracked nice and easily through this activity web part. So we can jump straight in and see what's been going on. Um, now I've updated my page and you can see I've got my recent documents, I've got my activity, and I've also got these folders that we created before to jump straight into. So this is all helping boost the chances and the efficiency, the productivity of the collaboration of our team. I just wanted to pause here to ask a quick favor from you. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. It really does mean a lot to me and it helps my channel grow. It's a free way that you can say thank you to me, but let's now get back to the content. Co-authoring. Now this might be something that you know about um, already, but I must stress how important co-authoring is. Now, if you're coming from a very legacy SharePoint point of view, you might remember the kind of check-in, checking out, publishing stages. Whereas co-authoring now is completely different. It means that multiple people can edit the same document at the same time. Um, so let's jump in and take a little look. Now, this is something that's very difficult for me to simulate because I'm actually recording this at the moment on my own and I don't have anyone to live test this with. However, I wanted to give you a bit of an idea of what it looks like. Now, if you were to go and edit any document that's stored inside of SharePoint, as in a, one, uh, as in a Word document, an Excel document, a PowerPoint, um, whatever, any file that's stored in SharePoint, if I was editing it and my colleague came inside the document at the same time and started editing it, you would see that person appears. So this is an example of a PowerPoint. And you can see as soon as they enter the document, their kind of profile picture will appear across the top. If I hover over it, it'll show their name. This is obviously just a, a test system account. Um, but it will show their name in here. Also, if it's PowerPoint, it will show exactly which slide they're currently on. If it's Excel, it'll show the exact cell inside of the spreadsheet they're currently on and editing. And if it's Word, you'll see exactly which line in the Word document. And as they're typing, it will be displaying to you so you can both work and collaborate on the document at the same time. This has to be one of the best collaborational features of using or the reasons to use SharePoint to store your documents um, in a team site and collaborate with your team members. So I really think you should be taking full advantage of this and working together. It makes hybrid working much easier as well because it means that you can both be working on the same document at the same time without having to be sat next to each other um, in the physical room. Then we have version history. Now, basically every change which is ever made on a document um, can be tracked with version history. So you know exactly who's done what and when on that document. So everything that is basically created, edited, anything like that is always tracked with version history inside of SharePoint. Now this goes off the sort of created date, the modified date, who modified it and uh, who created it. Now we can see a full list as almost like an audit by clicking on the three dots and then clicking on version history. This will then show me basically everything. It's not a great example here because I've only made the document, but every change which is made to that document, every edit, 
it will increment the version numbers and I can see exactly who did what and when. So basically, you can... There's some people I've come across which get a little bit kind of worried about having documents in a collaborational space or having the ability of a colleague to potentially be editing documents. But just to let you know, if something was to change and you didn't like that change, you can always go back in and select and restore from a previous version of the document as well. If you need any professional help setting up your SharePoint, there's a link in the description below to contact me. Look forward to hearing from you soon.